Hello students, it's good to be back with you here in chapel time uh, here at the end of the semester. Can you believe it? We are in the last week of the semester and you are busy taking finals this week and finishing up projects, papers. I hope you're able to get it all done by Friday and um, man, we miss you. We miss you terribly. Uh, it's been um, so lonely uh, being around here, just a few of us, but without you, it's not complete. And um, we want you to know that we care for you and that we are praying for you. In fact, if there's anything we can pray uh, about for you specifically in your life, please let us know. Email or text one of us and just uh, do that and we'll be praying for you. We, we pray for you every week at our admin meeting and other special times and we certainly uh, are concerned about you. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing you come this fall. I'm going to be preaching this morning, actually sharing my heart out of Matthew chapter 10. Let me read some verses starting in verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. I did some checking on this and found out that scientists tell us that there's somewhere around 400 billion birds in this world. 400 billion. Wow. That's a lot. Um, it's an amazing number that there are of birds uh, flying around. And God knows one of the least of the birds, the sparrow. He knows every time that sparrow falls. He knows everything about them. The point of this passage that Jesus is trying to make is for something as what people would consider worthless as a little bird. And God knows every time one of those dies. Don't you think God knows about you? Jesus goes on to make his point even bigger. And that is, he knows every hair on your head. They're numbered. Now, scientists, again, I Googled it, <laughs> and tell us that there's about 100,000 hairs on any particular person's head. Now, I know there'll be more with some, a whole lot less with others, but nevertheless, let's say around 100,000, 100,000. That means in our student body, we're looking at somewhere around 6 million hairs. 6 million. If you had 100 people, that would be uh, 10 million. If you had 1,000 people, that would be 100 million. 10,000 people would be a billion. 10,000 people. If you move it all up to even farther than that, all of a sudden you're getting into trillions of hairs, multiple trillions of hairs of just the people in the United States. God knows the exact number. And, and the, th the tricky part about that is, with birds, there are seasons, they, they, many of them are dying and, and being born every day, but, but just on your head, there are hairs growing out every day and all of us lose uh, a few hairs every day. Isn't that amazing? God knows that. He knows that amount completely. And so notice that He says, you are of more value than many sparrows. Here's my point today. No matter what we're going through, and we're going through a lot, God cares for you. These are troublesome times. I, in fact, I, I did a little looking at just some things that have happened this year, and jotted down a few things, that just reminding, reminding us of what has happened just this calendar year. When I went to Cuba back in January, uh, maybe the first part of February, somewhere in that period of time, I was in the airport. I forget whether it was going or coming, but right at around that period of time, while I was in the airport, I heard, uh, overheard somebody speak about the fact that Kobe Bryant had died. One of the greatest NBA players that had ever lived died in a helicopter accident. That happened this year. The impeachment of our president, all that mess <laughs> happened this year. How about all those fires that ravaged Australia? They say up to a billion animals died. Happened 
this year. This uh, coronavirus pandemic has spread across the globe and it's basically shutting down society as we know it. We're still going through that this year, aren't we? And now <laughs> we're hearing of murder hornets that are two inches, two inches long invading our country. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan step back as senior royals. <laughs> well, that's a little bit of a, a joke. Well, the, really the worst is that I had to turn on the TV the other day and I had to see Ryan Seacrest and Kelly Ripa live from their living room. It was, it was not good. Well, we can joke a little bit about some things that are happening in this world, but the truth is, it's scary. And I understand that it's scary. I understand that all of us are wondering. Now we can sit back and say, well, I don't think I'll get it. I'm not worried about it. None of my family have it. But when you look at the spread and see the numbers, sometimes they come out with some huge numbers that they think uh, how things are going to happen. And you wonder what's going to happen in the future. It gets scary. When you start listening to the uh, those who are declaring this to be the end of the world. And the truth is, I don't know. And by the way, they don't know either, just to let you know. But certainly things are shaping up between the pandemics and the fires and uh, the number of storms. I understand that April was a, a record or at least tied the record for the number of days that there was a tornado watch or warning or some sort of a storm warning in our country uh, in any April that is ever, ever on record. Uh, when we hear those kinds of things, when we hear these murderous hornets, <laughs> Uh, when we hear of all that, and by the way, they're only murderous for people who would be allergic to bee sting or to honeybees, I understand. But uh, when we hear of these kinds of things happening, uh, it's hard not to get scared. It's hard not to wonder what's going on. Let me read you another verse, and I'm jumping over to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. And I'll read you a couple of verses, chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. Just listen to this. And all things that behooved him, Jesus, to be made like unto his brethren, us, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people, for that in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them who are tempted. This verse in the book of Hebrews is in a section that is trying to show or is actually doing a very good job at showing that Jesus is superior because he became a human being. He became flesh and blood. He was made like unto his brethren, it says in this passage. It says he took upon flesh and blood in another part of the passage. Uh, Jesus became a human being so he could be made a little lower than the angels, become a man, a man, become one of us. So, first of all, so he could die for us. It says here that he made reconciliation for the sins of the people. Earlier in the passage, it says so he could destroy Satan. He could defeat Satan. No matter what evil you think is going on in this world, Jesus has already won that victory. Uh, in this world, you shall... I have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome it all. He is the victor. And so we can, uh, we can rest in Him for that. But ultimately, we can rest in Him because of what He has done for us on the cross. But it also says that He suffered. One of the benefits of Jesus becoming a human being was that He has gone through much of what we've gone through. He felt pain. He felt sorrow. He was hurt. Eventually, he even died. Jesus is able to go through what we go through. Uh, and he knows. He knows exactly what we are doing. Uh, he is, part of, uh, he is the part of the Trinity. He is the omniscient God who knows everything about you. Listen, if he knows every sparrow that falls, if he knows every hair on your head, I guarantee you he knows exactly what you're going through right now. Isn't that great? He knows. He's created you. He has become one of us. Now, to, to help with this, I brought with me a Hebrews test, even with red on it. 
Now, actually, this is the key uh, to a Hebrews test that I gave out this year. And, and uh, I did this uh, some in my theology class, too. But I've got a little chart down here that um, I'll show you that uh, is showing uh, the temptation of Eve and the temptation of Jesus Christ and what John says is in the world. Remember, John says all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And we can show that uh, Eve went through those three basic things. When she saw the, the fruit, she said that it looked good for food. That's the lust of the flesh. That it was pleasant to the eyes. That's the lust of the eyes. And it's a tree desired to make one wise. That's the pride of life. But when Jesus went through temptation, and, and you can find it in the book of Matthew and also in the book of Luke, I like to use the one in the book of Luke because it has the order that we're looking at here. So Luke chapter 4, if you want to look up this later, you can see that Jesus went through those three same areas. Remember, John says all that's in the world falls in these three categories. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Jesus was tempted. He had fasted for 40 days. Satan tempted him to take those stones and make them the bread. That's the lust of the flesh. Jesus, of course, said man shall not live by bread alone, he, he, by, by the word that comes from the mouth of God. Um, Jesus was not tempted to sin because of what Satan did, but he was hungry. He knows when you have physical problems, physical pains, physical ailments, he understands that. Don't you know that he suffered himself? Don't you know he, he realizes that? Now, he may not have had withdrawals from not being able to go out to eat at a restaurant. <laughs> uh, he may not be uh, fussing because uh, he may not have gone through the, the problem of not having sports on TV. Uh, and the other day, I was forced, I, I was stooped down to watching stupid robot fights. Have you ever seen those? Well, I can tell you, they're stupid. Anyway, it was ridiculous. It was I thought it would be, uh, anyway, I thought it would be something different than what it was. It was crazy. I watched about a minute of it and turned it off. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're reduced to that. I watched a marble race. You know, we're looking for things that we can watch. Jesus doesn't have those kinds of withdrawals, does he? But he has suffered things that we have suffered. And we need to understand that. Um, the lust of the eyes. Satan put him in front of the entire world. That's materialism. That's the desire to have things, have things, have things. He said, I'll give you all these kingdoms if you'll bow down and serve me. And Jesus resisted him. Jesus was tempted by things, by having things. That's kind of a ridiculous uh, temptation to somebody who made the universe in it. But still, he was tempted by that. And he was tempted by being put on the pinnacle of the temple. And Satan said, if you jump down, in fact, he said, the Bible says that you shouldn't dash your foot against the stone. That's out of the Psalms. He, he quoted scripture and Jesus said, you shouldn't tempt God. And, and that was a wrong thing to do. But if Jesus would have, uh, would have lit down a, a lit, I guess you could say, on the uh, area in front of the temple, jumped off, he would have been uh, going down and, and being saved, not hurt. If he would have done that, fallen down and not been hurt, he would have done that in front of all those high priests and all those priestly line there, the high priest and the priestly line there. Uh, he would have been uh, an instant hero to the Jews uh, if he would have shown off that way. Jesus never used his miracles to show off to anybody. But there was a pride of life issue. Jesus has been tempted in all the areas like you. You've been tempted. My point is this. Jesus knows everything that you've gone through. Not only does he know, but he hears in this passage, when I read to you, it says he is, uh, he is able to succor them that are tempted. The word succor there uh, literally means to bring aid. And it, uh, another meaning is to respond to a cry. Respond to a cry. I remember when our, our son was born, our first child. And uh, We'd been married three years. We lived in a, uh, we'd rented a big old farmhouse and uh, we were just using three rooms. <laughs> we shut off the rest of it. And he was born in December. And uh, that first night, uh, Miss Debbie had uh, uh, Josh in a little bassinet right beside the bed. And every whimper, she would be up and awake, you know. Uh, by, uh, after a night or two, he was at the end of the bed. By the, by, about a week later, he was about three rooms over because every cry she heard and she'd wake up. But if he cried, she would be up uh, to uh, 
to do something. I should have said every sound she would be up. But if he cried, she would be up. She would be up to help him. And she knew if it was a, a hungry cry. She knew if it was a cry because he needed his diaper change. She knew it was a cry because he was hurting. She knew it was a cry because he was just whimpering and uncomfortable. She knew if it was a cry if he got mad. And we all have different, you get to learn your children's cries in that way. But the thing was, she heard and she responded to that cry. That's what mothers do with babies. That's what God does with you. He responds to what you are concerned about. He knows and he hears you. Some people are saying this is the end of the world. Some people are saying we're doomed. <laughs> Some people are saying it's a government takeover, it's a Chinese takeover, it's a whatever. What I know is God is in control. I know that He knows, He hears, and I know He cares. He cares about you. Please don't forget that. Please don't forget that the God who knows exactly how many hairs are on your head knows exactly how you feel today. Don't forget it. I trust that God will bless you and we'll look forward to seeing you in coming days. And we'll be praying for you. Take care.